the La Lorie Mansion located on Royal Street in the French Quarter of New Orleans is said to be one of the most haunted places in what many believe is the most haunted city in the United States. If this old structure does house some ghostly entities, it comes as no surprise because of the property's history of brutality. Madame Delphine McCarthy LaLaurie was a wealthy New Orleans socialite and notorious slave owner. She and her husband Dr. Leonard Louis Nicholas LaLaurie bought the property in 1831 from Edmund Sony at Dufasat, which included a house already under construction. The two-story mansion was completed in 1832 and included attached slave quarters. Marie Delphine McCarthy was born in 1787, in New Orleans during what is known as the Spanish Colonial Period. She was one of five children born to Louis Bartholomew de McCarty and Marie Jean Larable, both of whom were prominent citizens of New Orleans. When she grew up, she married Don Ramon de Lopez y Angulo, a high-ranking Spanish royal officer, at the St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans. In 1804, after the United States acquired New Orleans as part of the Louisiana Purchase, Don Ramon was called back to Spain. When he and Delphine, who was pregnant at the time, stopped in Cuba, Don Ramon died suddenly. A few days after this tragedy, Delphine gave birth to a daughter and later returned to New Orleans. In June of 1808, Delphine married Jean Blanc, who was a prominent banker, merchant, lawyer, and legislator. The couple would eventually have four children. Jean Blanc died suddenly in 1816. In June of 1825, Delphine married her third husband, physician Leonard Louis Nicholas LaLaurie, who was many years younger than her. The couple would have two daughters together. In 1831, she bought the property on Royal Street, which she managed in her own name with little involvement from her husband. The mansion was finished the next year complete with stunning chandeliers, elaborate carvings, and wrought iron banisters. Delphine maintained a renowned position in New Orleans society by hosting lavish parties for other socialites who enjoyed fine food and drink. However, her marriage to Dr. LaLaurie began to have problems, and in November of 1832, Delphine petitioned the court for a separation stating that he had treated her in such a manner as to render their living together unsupportable. These claims were confirmed by her son and two of her daughters. During this time, rumors started to swirl about Delphine's poor treatment of her slaves as many reported them to look haggard and wretched. However, when out in public, Delphine was usually polite to black people and considerate of her slaves' health. However, the rumors continued, and finally, the reports were sufficiently widespread that a local lawyer was sent to the house in 1832 to remind Delphine of the laws regarding the well-being of slaves. However, during the visit, the lawyer found no evidence of wrongdoing or mistreatment by Delphine. But, following the investigation she paid for legal services and sold several of her slaves. As word continued to spread, other socialites were no longer willing to participate in her social events or interact with the LaLaurie family. Not long after the lawyer's visit, a neighbor reported that one of Delphine's slaves, a girl of about 10 years, fell to her death from the roof of the Royal Street Mansion while trying to avoid punishment from Madame LaLaurie. The girl, whose name was Lia, was buried on the mansion grounds. Allegedly, this incident led to an investigation of Delphine, who were found guilty of cruelty and was forced to forfeit nine of her slaves, but the slaves were later returned to the LaLaurie mansion. Other rumors said that Delphine kept her cook chained to the kitchen stove and when her daughters attempted to feed the slaves, she beat them as well. This may be the reason that several people reported that Madame LaLaurie's daughters seemed very quiet and very pale. Funeral registers between the years 1830 and 1834 document the deaths of 12 slaves at the mansion, however, the causes of death were not stated. These deaths included a cook and laundress named Bonnie and her four children. Court records also show that Delphine freed two of her slaves, one named Jean Lewis in 1819 and another named De Vince in 1832. In April of 1834, a fire broke out at the LaLaurie Mansion. When the police and firefighters arrived, they found that the blaze had started in the kitchen, 
where they discovered the cook chained to the stove by her ankle. Later, she told authorities that she had set the fire as a suicide attempt because she feared being punished. She also told them that when slaves were taken to the uppermost room they never came back. Bystanders responding to the fire tried to enter the slave quarters to make sure that everyone had evacuated. When they were refused the keys, the bystanders broke down the doors to the slave quarters and found a shocking sight. They found seven slaves horribly mutilated and suspended by the neck with their limbs stretched and torn from one extremity to the other. The slaves said that they had been imprisoned there for several months. It was also reported that the slaves were emaciated, showed signs of being flogged with a whip, were bound in restrictive postures and wore spiked iron collars. Rumors also circulated that dead bodies were found in the attic with their corpses mutilated beyond recognition. Judge Jean-Francois Cananje was one of the bystanders present at the La Lorie mansion and was quoted as saying that he had found a slave wearing an iron collar and an old Negro woman who had received a very deep cut on her head and was too weak to be able to walk. He also said that when he questioned Delphine's husband about the slaves and was told in an insolent manner some people had better stay at home rather than come to others' houses to dictate laws and meddle with other people's business. As the news of the abused slaves spread throughout the community, an angry mob of local citizens attacked the La Lori mansion and destroyed everything upon which they could lay their hands. By the time the sheriff and his officers dispersed the crowd, the house had sustained major damage, with little left but the walls. The slaves were then taken to the cabildo, where they were available for public viewing. A local newspaper reported that up to 4,000 people had attended to view the slaves to convince themselves of their sufferings. Investigators later found several bodies, including a child, buried throughout the property. The New Orleans Advertiser reported on the findings in an article by stating, We understand, that in digging the yard, bodies have been disinterred, and the condemned well, having been uncovered, others, particularly that of a child, were found. In the meantime, the LaLaurie family fled in a fast-moving carriage, first to Mobile, Alabama, and then to Paris, France where Delphine lived out the rest of her life before she died in 1849, at the age of 62. The nearly destroyed mansion with its gaping windows and empty walls continued to stand in its ruined state for another four years. In 1838, the property was bought by Charles Caffin and rebuilt by Pierre Traster. A third floor and a rear building were added in the 19th century and at three stories high, it was described in 1928 as the highest building for squares around. In the years that followed, the building was used for many different purposes including as a public high school, a music conservatory, an apartment building, a refuge for young delinquents, a bar, and a furniture store. In April of 2007, the house was purchased by actor Nicolas Cage for $3.45 million. However, this was at about the same time that Cage began to suffer from financial difficulties and just two years later the property was listed for auction as a result of foreclosure. Today, the house is privately owned, the entrance to the building bears a Baroque facade with iron grillwork on its balconies. Inside, the foyer is floored in black and white marble and a curved mahogany-railed staircase runs the full three stories of the building. The second floor holds three large drawing rooms connected by ornamented sliding doors, whose walls are decorated with plaster rosettes, carved woodwork, black marble mantelpieces, and fluted columns. Although the mansion is not the same as the one that the LaLaurie family lived in and cannot be toured, it is highlighted by many New Orleans ghost tours due to its tragic history and tales of being haunted. The tales of it being haunted began soon after Delphine left New Orleans for Paris, at which time people claimed to hear the phantom screams of her victims coming from the house in the dead of night. By 1885, the historical sketchbook and guide to New Orleans referred to it as the haunted house on Royal Street. In 1892, the Daily Picayune referred to it as the haunted house. The stories continued into the next decades describing the property as being haunted by the victims of Delphine LaLaurie. The tales say that wails of agony infest its rooms at night, doors slam, faucets suddenly turn on, and the furniture moves on its own. 
body imprints are found on beds that no one has slept on. Apparitions of slaves, some wearing chains, have been seen walking around the property. The ghost of Delphine herself does not appear on the property grounds, but has supposedly been seen at the nearby St. Louis Cemetery, where she once worshipped. The mansion and its history have been featured in numerous books and on many ghost hunting television shows. A fictionalized version of Delphine LaLaurie appeared in season 3 of the American Horror Story, Coven. Delphine was played by Oscar winner Kathy Bates. Most recent plans include that the LaLaurie Mansion will play a central part in the Conjuring Horror franchise. Today thousands of tourists travel to New Orleans every year to visit this property and others in what many say is the most haunted city in the United States.